Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Assassin from the Core Space Sci Fi Miniatures game. Here's our Assassin miniature, all ready to go, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted him to a tabletop ready standard. And we're going to use just some Citadel paint and a couple of the Vallejos as well. And here he's all primed using the Citadel colour Wraithbone contrast undercoat spray and here's a list of all the paints we'll be using so we've got the wraithbone layer on the left for any touch-ups we need to do we've got the citadel shade contrast paints a technical paint and then we've also got a white and grey Vallejo paint. So for these six paints, that's all you're gonna need for this model, and you don't really need the null oil. That's an extra step I wanted to throw in. Okay, the brush I'll be using mostly is the Army Painter Wargamer character brush, but I also use the Kalinsky size number two, the synthetic version, which I really like. Okay, let's get started with the first stage, which is the null oil, and I'm gonna put this shade over the entire model. And the idea with this was to give the model some nice shade in all those recesses and I thought this would be a great way to do that. There's going to be a lot of white on this so I wanted to do something in the early stages to get in amongst those gaps and crevices to make the job a lot easier. We're looking for a tabletop ready standard so we want it to be quite quick and easy to achieve um, but we also want it to look really neat as well so I thought this would be a good start. Then I got the black Templar contrast paint and I've gone over all the areas of the model that are black and so this is really going to build on that shade and I waited till that shade dried until I did this stage and this is going to really build up the layers of shadow under there make it really dark in places and then on the more uppermost kind of raised areas this contrast is going to dry a little bit thinner and that's going to give us a little contrast between those deep areas and then the raised areas and so I do this all over the model I'm taking my time being quite careful here you know trying not to go over the areas that are going to be white because we've already covered those in the shade now. And now with, with that shade, you didn't really have to do it. We could have just gone over all the black areas and even the black lines with this black contrast paint. But I just thought, for me, that's a little bit too detailed and um, I don't feel I was up to it. So I used the shade instead. But if you're more skilled and you've got a fine brush that you think you can get in there with, then I certainly would say to go with the black Templar because I think you'll get a better finish in the end. But anyway, this is the way we've gone with this model and um, it makes it a lot easier for me to do it like this. So I'm just gonna continue with that Black Templar now, blocking out all those areas of black paint and then moving the model all the time. So I've got a nice firm grip on the model and also I'm resting on the table. Certainly for this bit, there's one really thin line here that I wanted to be quite dark. So I'm really bracing myself on the table, taking my time and using the very tip of the brush to make that as neat as I can. And then just constantly looking at the model and picking out those areas such as here down by the leg that's going to be black because there's a lot of different areas that are going to be black and white but the kind of lines between them are quite difficult to see so that shade helped a little bit but really just take your time and make sure you cover it all and keep moving the model and looking to see which areas you want to cover in the black also have some reference materials in front of you like a picture from the book or online that really helps too and so I'm just finishing off Again, moving that model, making it as easy as I can, and just making sure I get all the black areas filled. And that wasn't quite black enough on top of the head, so I'm just going back, and I'm going to give that one more go, just to make it nice and, and kind of prominent there. For the next stage, I was going to use the Apothecary White Contrast Paint to go over all the white panels, and I thought that that shade would come through a bit and make it a little bit battle-worn, like I've done with the other members of the Purge, like the Harvester and the Devastators, and I really like that effect on them, but I found using this Contrast Apothecary White didn't work, it didn't look very good, so I wiped it off straight away, and I went for another option, which was to take the Vallejo, 0.951 white and just simply block all these areas in. So I, I felt with this one it didn't look good or grungy like I wanted to go with the other ones. And I thought with the Assassin they probably wouldn't be right in amongst the battle getting all blast damage on them. They wouldn't be covered in like dust or whatever from the fight. I thought they'd be more cleaner and they'd be coming in from the shadows if you like and striking in the last minute and so not really getting involved in like firefights. And so I think blocking in with this pure white is going to work for them. It also it also looks like the more like the model from the book, from the photographs. And I think so. I think this works works fine. But I think I have to be a little bit neater doing this. And this is where that shade underneath 
wasn't 100% the best way to go, I don't think. So if I was to do this again, I think I'd probably be a bit braver with that black and try and get those lines a little bit crisper and then not do the shade, but I'd rather go in with the black in amongst the little lines like that. But it does help a little bit here, like on the hands, certainly. I'm just picking the raised fingers and giving them the white paint. And so we can see some of that shadow coming through in between them. Once that white paint had two coats and was fully dried, I took the Nihilic Oxide Technical Paint and then I popped that over this pointed weapon here and gave it a good coat. And this is like a chalky paint, so it's going to dry in a way that it almost looks like it's kind of glowing a little bit, but it's not like a glossy glow. Um, and so this is a really good effect for things like this as well. For this light on the front of the robot, we can put a nice dollop of that and that works really well. I also put one on the head too. I found I put a little bit too much, so I just took my brush, wiped it on a paper towel, got rid of all the paint, and then I just sucked up some of that paint with the brush, and then that did the job. So you want this to kind of overlap it a little bit because you want it to look like it's glowing. So that worked really well, and then just to make sure, a little tidy up there. Then I took some technical paint, Blood for the Blood God, and now this is a glossy paint, and so I've gone in for the eyes here. One nice big dot right in the eye socket, and that does the job a treat. Again, moving that model, making it nice and easy, and making sure I've got a good firm grip. Then I took some Sky Grey 0.989 from Vallejo and this paint goes all over the base giving it a nice thick coat and then rather than doing any patterns or any textures on the base I've left it nice and plain so that when it's on that awesome terrain matte is really going to stand out. Then with a little bit of blue tack on a brush I'm just going to pop that miniature on the blue tack and that's going to give me like a little turntable so you can spin that around and that's going to help when it comes to painting the rim here and again nice coat you might need two coats of this this gray paint all over your base just to get it nicely coated and so this is the final stage of the model and we could again go back and touch up those lines with black if we wanted to but for a tabletop ready standard i think i was happy with this and it turned out great and um again i think you could tidy it up a little bit, maybe even another coat of white, and that's something I might go back to. But once it's on the tabletop, you don't really notice any of those small details, and I was really happy with this. The base you know, really does the job. It's a great color, works really well with the gaming mat, and I think that that white and black work nicely. So overall, I'm happy, but certainly I could improve on this, and I think going back and tidying up would be a good idea. Here's the two Devastator models I painted. I did one in orange, one in red, just to show how the different colours would work with it. And they've got that white helmet as well. So I think this worked well. You can see how that Null Noyons really come through both the red and the orange to give that battle kind of damage look. I think that worked really nicely. But this is where I really liked it, when I used it on the Purge. And I did that that wash with the Null Noil, then an Agoras Dunes colour, and I was really happy with how these come out. But you imagine this on the Assassin, it just wouldn't have looked right, a little bit too grungy. And here they all are, all the four miniatures of the Purge, all lined up. We've got the live one there, which I'll do a video for as well, and then you can see what they all look like together in the lineup. If you'd like to see how I painted the other members of the Purge, then I've done a separate video for the Devastator, and that'll show you how to do the two colours. I've also done for the live one, and this is the easiest of them all, really simple, just a few colours there, not many at all. And then finally for the Harvester, I'll show you how I did that and used those techniques for him too. But all the paints I've used in this video, I'll put in the description below, and I'll also put a link so you can pick them up. And it'll be an affiliate link to Element Games, but it won't cost you anything extra. In fact, you can save up to 20% there on all your game products and all your paints and models and miniatures. And for every sale made through a link, I get a small commission, and that's going to help me do loads more videos like this. So thanks so much for that support, for supporting the channel, and um, for helping me. So thanks so much. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed this video from the Core Space series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>